Hey, Don Victor for Art Score in the Academy of Composition with some thoughts about color. Here's a funny story. When I was about 16, I was doing caricatures at Dorney Park, and we had two different prices, one for black and white and one for color caricature. And this innocent little soul asked me, Sir, why do you charge colored people more? And I didn't get what she meant, but when I did, it was a very funny but beautiful little moment. And so with that said, do you know our use and relationship with color as artists really started with the car industry? How crazy is that? For something that has such an impact on artwork, and yet it's fairly modern. That's not to say color wasn't used back in the old days. But in those days, it was such an expensive uh, thing to do because you had to travel and then like mine out the ore and then ship it. You know, all that just to get the pigments to make the paint. And a lot of the time, the pigment, you know, you had to work with, you had to mix urine in it. And so it just kind of makes me think that maybe some of the uh, folks in those old paintings had perfect teeth in real life, but uh, the pee in the paint made their teeth a little more yellow than it really was in real life. Go pee. (laughs) Now that we have color, we have to ask ourselves a question. Do we want to master it? Do we want to be in control or do we want to be controlled as we go through this checklist. It's important to ask this question and know it. So, do you want to be in control or not? If you do, then this video is for you. I'm speaking to artists who want more predictability, structure, and control in their relationship with color. So let's go over the 12 points in this color checklist so that you can plan your palette and compose your colors better. Check one. Consider all the lights and the dark values in your composition carefully before thinking about color. Norman Rockwell said, before I ever think about color or texture, my drawing and design have to be perfect. Now we're not all Norman Rockwell, so shoot for great if perfect is too unattainable. Check two. To plan your color strategy, create a list of all the elements in your composition that will be painted. So. Break it down into objects and items. You can write it on a piece of paper. I actually use an Excel sheet for this. Break all the elements in your image down to object and item. For example, in a landscape, your object may be the sky. Your object may be the land. In terms of the items under your object called sky, you might include the sky, the clouds, the birds, the sun. Then the items that's under land could be the trees, the hills, the grass, the lavender, and the poppy flowers. Check three. Using only blue and yellow, compose a temperature map that indicates what is cool and what is warm. For some artists, when they hear the word temperature, they take it literally. And so they'll build a temperature map based on the sunlight or the light. And really what they're looking for is the heat and the shadow. And that's fine. I would encourage you as a composer versus, let's say, being a copier or a mimicker of nature. But to be a composer where you're inventing and you're using your imagination and you're trying to communicate a story or a feeling or a sensation, I'd like you to approach temperature a little bit differently. So I'd like to encourage you to think about it in this way. Imagine if you were in a very hot, desolate desert and you're looking around and all that yellow-orange sand is everywhere and you're thirsty and you're crawling through this thing. Now, would your state of mind change or shift if you all of a sudden found this watery crystal blue oasis? It would, right? So let's try it from this angle. Imagine you're lost at sea, and all you can see in front of you is sky and water, and everything is just blue. And even the crew on the ship that you're on, they got that, like, lost at sea blues, you know? They're not feeling well, and everything around you is just blue. Then in the distance, the sunlight hits this little tropical beach. And on that beach, that, that orange sand that's in that beach just brings optimism. Like you've discovered a place to rest, a place to land. You're no longer lost. Okay? That would also shift your state of mind. So this is what we're looking to do with temperature. Is you want to design it for this experience that then gives this, this profound shift. And so the eye wants to travel through a warm painting and it's looking to discover that oasis or it's floating through this cool sea of blues looking for that island. And if it doesn't get that, 
If it doesn't get that experience, it feels like it's stranded or lost, and that's not a good feeling. And so, you know, one would have to ask, what kind of friend are you if you would uh, take your viewers through a work of art and make them feel lost and stranded? Not a pretty good one. So let's be friends to the people who look at our artwork and not make them feel stranded or lost. Temperature maps allow you to provide that kind of experience to your viewers. Check four. Decide the two prominent local colors to be used in your composition. Obviously, a local color is the color the item is. This is pretty straightforward. So if we went back to the example of the landscape, the sky is, let's say, a yellow orange, and the land is a yellow green. And that would be the two prominent colors. Now, the sky could be a blue and the land could be a green. It's really that simple. Just pick those two prominent colors. The rule that you want to apply to that is do not pick two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel and do not pick complements. Do not pick complements. Do not pick complements. Do not pick complements. If you mix complements together, your color gets dull or dirty. You don't want to mix compliments. Don't mix compliments. And if you haven't ever heard me say it before, don't. You got it. Check five. Choose the best six colors that include your two prominent local colors by using a palette finder. What do I mean by palette finder? A palette finder is an organized way of limiting your palette. It's important that you limit your palette, that you don't use every color in the color wheel. And when we say a color wheel, I'm talking about a 12 point color wheel. So you don't want to use every color in there. So we want to limit that palette and you want to find a logical way of doing that. And when you do, it gives uh, your artwork harmony, rhythm, a mood, it gives it soul. So it's very, very important that you limit your palette in a logical way. So I advise artists that I collaborate with to limit their palette to six colors. Now, technically it's seven colors, but because we don't really like using the complement, we want to hide the complement. And so you can use that seventh color if it's absolutely necessary, but you want to try to be able to go through the whole entire painting process without using the complement. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys who are listening saying, what in the world are you talking about, dude? I've been taught to use compliments ever since I was in grade school. Wonderful. Don't use them. <laughs> but I'm going to give you another option that works a lot better. It's close to the compliment, but it's not the compliment. So I'll, I have your back, I promise. A palette finder is a system that gives you a logical order to choosing that limited palette. It could be the Zorn palette. A lot of people use that when doing portraits. And you could use the Graves palette. Uh, you could use the Daniel Green palette. You could use the Fletcher, which is a brilliant palette. And of course, there's the Vargas palette, which is a system that we use at the Academy of Composition. Check six. Decide both the key color and which element in the composition that key color should be applied to. Now, what in the world is a key color? Imagine a football game. Your palette of colors are the football players and your key color is the quarterback. He is the leader, director, and he's the figure in charge on the field. If he is removed, the team suffers more than if any other player is removed. Now, if you're not into sports, then I feel you. So, let's try this. Imagine a choir of purple robe singers singing in a heavenly harmony. And then there's that wonderful, that delightful moment when the singer in the red-orange robe steps forward and like an angel sings a melody straight from the throne of God. So this is the purpose of the key color. It juxtaposes the other colors and it activates them and it leads them. And so it's important to protect your key color. You want to find the object that you're going to use that key color on. And it, like I said, juxtaposes it. So it's not going to look like the rest of the palette. It's going to be its own identity. And when you see it, you see it, you know it. Check seven. Mix a palette black and a neutral gray from the core color triad in your palette. So in your palette of six colors, there is a power triad. If your palette system doesn't have uh, that base triad of colors, those three power colors, then pick the key color and the two prominent local colors that you selected earlier and mix them in equal parts to create your palette black. If you're using the Fletcher or the Vargas method, it's built upon a 
specific triad of colors okay and so you use those three those three colors so for example you might be in the key of red orange and so the red orange would actually be the key of red orange blue violet and green mixing those three colors in equal parts is going to give you that palette black once you add white to it now you can start graying it down and you you want to have both a gray and that black but the rule is never ever 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 use black straight out of the tube I promise you this, your painting will not forgive you. It will hold a grudge for 10 generations if you do such a thing. And be logical, be in control. Your colors, there's six of them, they work as a team. Combine them to make that, that perfect black, that palette black, that's the black congruent with the colors in your painting. Check eight. It's going to be super, super simple. If you need a tint, your color, add white. If you need to shade your color, make it darker. Just add some of that palette black that you've mixed. Enough said. Next, check nine. For the best underpainting, use the split complement of the local color you're using. Let your temperature map pick whether to use the warm or the cool split complement. Your underpainting, it's a pot of gold when it comes to color control. At the Academy of Composition, we leverage the split complement of the local color when we're painting. The split complement of yellow is blue, violet, or red violet. So when you're needing to choose which one to use as the underpainting, how do you do that? Well, that's why you've composed a temperature map. If the item you're painting is cool, then use the blue violet because it's the cooler of the two options and so on. Now color just got a whole lot more complicated in this section, but that's where in your painting becomes very, very rich because of the complexity and the sophistication and the control and the quality. We may not be splitting atoms and hairs here, but we are splitting color. And that is the beauty and the power of the underpainting through the split complements. And again, as I said a long time ago, don't use complement. Use split complement and use your temperature map to select which of the two complements you're going to use. Check 10. Carefully tune your color mixes to match the value that you've already pre-planned pre in your composition. As you mix your colors, be super sensitive because the simplest of touch, meaning another color that comes in, can shift the color you're working on in a very different direction. Proceed gently at first until you're really comfortable with mixing uh, color. Stay true to the values that you planned in the beginning. Remember, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So plan your work and work your plan. And for every hour of planning, you save four hours of work. Always remember that. Be true, be honest, be disciplined, be in control, be a great artist, and love the process. Check 11. Use a color notation system to document the color mixes you're using so that you can remix them later. In the Graves, Fletcher, and Vargas method, we all use a notation system to document the colors we see and mix. It is 100% possible to actually compose all of the colors and pre-mix them before putting your first brush stroke to canvas. That's control. But if you really, really want to be able to plan your palette and compose your colors, then that could be a worthy aspiration. Lastly, check 12. Make sure every single color choice you make supports the story or the purpose of your artwork. And not only color choice, but every value, every line, every space, every shape that you make in your image, every decision you make, every choice you make, make it smart. Know why you're producing the artwork and then make every decision count. And so that is check 12. So artists who see themselves as riddle and puzzle solvers, those of us who may not be mathematicians, but see the significance of math in art, to those who see themselves as engineers and inventors of fine art and love making smart choices over seeking to be possessed by some kind of creative alien life force, this checklist and approach is great for you. When I was a little boy, I knew I was a different because when I watched the Smurfs, remember the Smurfs? They had all these different Smurfs. And one of the neat things about it is that you identified with different Smurfs. So I always thought it was very interesting that I never identified with the Archie Smurf or for some reason I thought the Archie Smurf, Smurf was also the Vanity Smurf. But the one that I saw as the artist Smurf 
was Handy Smurf. And it's funny because I grew up always putting a pencil on my ear or my paintbrush on my ear. And my, my, my daughter and my son do it now. And it comes from identifying with Handy Smurf because he always had that pencil in his ear. And I bring him up because what I found over the years is just different kinds of artists. And some of us are much more, more of a logical, more of a classic kind of artist. Not necessarily just academic. We're looking for systems. We're looking for ways to uh, have dictable outcomes, consistency in our work. And this isn't necessary for every artist. Some artists, they're much more about just wanting to um, have the, the self-therapeutic experience of just feeling the art and all that stuff. And that's beautiful. But then there are those other artists who want to get really good and they want more education and they want to learn better systems and ways and approaches and ways that kind of give them a predictable direction. And so this checklist is for that kind of artist. Then this logical, predictable, measured, controlled, and useful procedure for planning your palette and composing your color in the end is a worthy science to practice when it comes to color. You're also not afraid of hard work and long hours in the studio earning your title as artist, not just giving it to yourself, then you will understand this quote by the great Degas. Painting is easy when you don't know how, but very difficult when you do. <laughs> it's heavy to know more and to learn more about art because when we do, there comes a greater responsibility. For some artists, it's about making money and getting famous. For others, we seek to be the best that we can be and honor the heritage of those giants that came before us. And so in my opinion, as artists, we have to make a choice. Do we want to be in control of our color or let the color control us? And if we want control over color, then as my father would say, and I've said plenty of times in here, plan. Because when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Van Gogh said, you can't be on the North Pole and the equator at the same time. So pick a line. And for him, he said his line was color. And boy, didn't he own it. Download the color composition checklist and let it become part of your studio practice. Plan your palette and compose your color. Plan your palette and compose your color. Plan your palette and compose your colors. And if you feel you need to learn how to compose with color, or you think you would like to have a mentor to guide you through that process, the Academy of Composition is running a special offer for those who download the color composition checklist. And to that, this is Don Victor. Ciao.